morning, everybody. Um, it's great to see so many people here. We've got 63 in the room, 64. <laughs> I won't keep counting as people come, though. Um, so quick welcome. Um, the meeting is being recorded. Um, so that's just to enable us to share the recording with those that can't make it today. Um, and for us to make sure we keep the right uh, account of what's going on. Um, so just be aware of that. And whilst you're not speaking or um, not being invited to ask, ask a question, please, could you keep yourself muted? That'd be great. Thank you. Um, a brief introduction to the uh, agenda. We'll have a welcome and intros um, in just a second. Um, we'll go through the, the memorandum of understanding between the um, voluntary sector and statutory sectors, so that includes the ICB and Somerset Council, and the engagement framework we're hoping to um, put into place to help with to help with that delivery. Um, Hannah's going to give us a brief overview of the Reflect, Recover and New updates from Penny. Um, and then Kate Hellard from Somerset Council will be joining us to do the same about the local community networks and just give you an overview of what they are. Um, we're then going to go into breakout rooms to look at the um, sustainability of the sector and just have a little think about um, what our key challenges are currently and how we might be able to help support overcoming those challenges, I guess. And then we'll do a bit of feedback and close. So hopefully it'll all go smoothly. Bear with us if there are any technical uh, problems. We've got quite a lot of people to put into different breakout rooms, etc. Um, because there are so many, if you wouldn't mind, if you've got a question, just raising your hand and then we can come to you. Otherwise, we sometimes lose things in the chat if it moves too quickly. Um, but please do use the chat as well if you'd like to. Um, Yes, so we've already got a question. <laughs> so, Caroline? It's just that when you're speaking, it would be nice to see you, please. I think that's something that you need to do within your own screen. I can see you, Cindy. Oh. OK. OK, sorry. I think it might just be your, your viewing preferences, how you've got your viewing preferences, maybe. Has no. that helped, Caroline? No, not really. <laughs> no, I've, cha I've changed the settings of Cindy's. It might be because we're sharing the slides. Apologies. Hopefully you can watch the recording back and see us all. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, Hannah, are you OK for me to hand over and I'll, t I'll take over from the allowing people in? So Hannah's just going to go through a um, a short exercise with us on Menti. Um, welcome everyone. My name is Hannah Snowden um, and I'm in the partnerships team at Spark Somerset. Um, for those of you who attended the first meeting, um, we used Menti to capture some feedback. We're doing that again. Um, there is the ability to um, for me to share it within the presentation, although I know that might not work for everybody. Um, if you don't have a Teams account. So I'm going to put a link and the code in the chat so that you can either click on the link and go straight to the questions um, or go to menti.com in your web browser and pop in the code that's there. Um, we know that there are lots of different terms that we use to refer to the sector. Um, there's VCSE, there's VCFSE, um, there's the third sector, and we want to capture some feedback from you about how relevant you feel those terms are to you. Um, if it's an acronym, I've put the um, explanation. Um, but you, for those of you who can see Menti on the screen, you should be able to hover over the um, different lines and vote, so we will be able to see um, things as it changes in real time, which is quite exciting. 
And there will be another question in a minute um, looking at whether you've got any other suggestions. Barbara. Oh, um, yeah, I can't get it, so I, I don't know. That's fine. I will. We'll keep the link live um, for a couple of days. So those that can't vote in the meeting, uh, it'll go out um, after the meeting and you'll be able to vote then. That's fine. OK, thank you. Sorry about this. No, that's fine. There's some really good feedback there. If we include faith in the title, we need to ensure the faith sector is around the table with us. I feel VCFSE captures everyone, although I struggle to remember the acronym. I know some I come across in some meetings that people struggle to say the acronym sometimes, um, which is part of all part of the conversation. Right. I think Cindy, we are ready to go on to the next bit. People can continue inputting into Menti if they haven't already um, and we'll still see that information and we will share that again after the event. Great, thanks Hannah. Um, can you share the other slides? Okay, so just a little introduction, as Hannah said, um, we are part of the partnerships team at uh, Spark Somerset. So my name's Cindy Furs, for those that haven't met me already. Um, we are, our role is to try and support um, partnership working between the statutory sector and, and our sector and look at how, what the challenges are for that and how we might um, be able to overcome those challenges. Um, so firstly, the MOU update, if we could have that at hand. Lovely. So the Memorandum of Understanding and the Engagement Framework. Um, those of you that were at the first assembly some time ago, um, this was talked about briefly because it was still being put together and planned. Um, so since then, there's been quite a lot of movement. So we thought it would be really useful for us to update on what's happened and where we are and how that looks to be um, developing over the next few months. Um, so it's a partnership agreement between the Integrated Care Board, Somerset Council and the Voluntary Community Faith and Social Enterprise Sector. It's a written understanding between partners about how we want to engage and embed the voluntary sector within that governance system and, and, and to ensure that we're supporting decision making. Um, we want... Um, to be able to shape the conversation and services. So it's really important that we get that partnership um, developing and really strong. Um, it's worth saying that this is something that all ICS systems within the um, country are, are expected to put into place. So every BCSE alliance or uh, assembly as we are, um, is looking to have a partnership agreement with that um, ICB. Um, an ICS system. Okay, next slide, please. So the vision is around embedding the voluntary sector within the Somerset system. Um, that's about information flowing uh, so that uh, it flows both ways. Um, we can feed information in around um, what activities and services our, our user groups and our communities are really looking at. Um, we want to do that by putting representatives onto strategic boards and groups so that at the very start of those conversations at strategic level, uh, the voluntary sector voice and the community's voice is heard quite strongly. Um, we want there to be flexibility and peer support between those thematic priorities and for infrastructure um, to help support that route. OK, next slide, please. Our role is to help support delivery and services to people and communities. 
to have insight from being embedded in those communities. We, we understand how communities are working, what needs there are. Um, each community is very different. And so we, we have that oversight. Um, a mechanism for accessing and hearing stakeholder voices so we can lobby and campaign. Um, experience of taking a holistic, preventative and person-centred approach to supporting community health and well-being. Links across and within different communities of interest and our ability to adapt and be responsive. And we have expertise in impact measurement and co-design of services. So we bring a huge wealth of information and knowledge to this partnership. Next slide, please. We thought it'd be really interesting to just show an overview of the sector. Um, and I'll, I'll leave you to look at that. And um, lots of comments coming in the chat about will these slides be shared? Yes, everything will be shared after this meeting and the recording will be shared as well. So you'll be able to go back over this. Cindy, okay, just before you move on, um, yeah. there's been a question in the chat about um, patients in Somerset using um, other systems services like Mendip using Baines, Yeovil and Dorchester, uh, Yeovil using Dorchester. Um, so will we be signing an MOU with these and all of our surrounding systems or is it just for Somerset? No, it's just within Somerset. So what we're hoping to do is to extend our partnerships beyond our county boundaries because we we have that all over the, the edges of the of the county. Um, so there are meetings that happen regionally as well so that we can keep those conversations going across the ICSs um, and, and across the boundaries. But, but the um, expectation for this um, partnership agreement is very much within our own system. So just with Somerset. Okay, next slide, please. So we had a workshop that was facilitated um, by uh, somebody who's been working very closely with many um, ICS systems across the country to, to help support these conversations. Um, and that workshop was attended uh, by the ICB, the Inter Integrated Care Board, Somerset Council and representatives from the Somerset Group of Charities. Um, and it took place back in March. And during that workshop, <clears throat> we looked at a, a set of shared values that could establish how our partnership agreement might um, might be developed and and for those values to be embedded in everything that we do within that partnership. Excuse me. Uh, so this is reflected in the memor memorandum of understanding. Um, these values are, we are collaborative, so, th so that it is a proper collaboration, so that it's about us all thinking about ourselves as, as um, partners rather than uh, individuals and working in silos, sharing knowledge, um, etc. We have integrity, building trust and acting with honesty and transparency. Community focused, which is really important. Um, and helping local communities to develop the, the services that they really need. Um, striving for equity, uh, a model that is shared strategic decision making so that those voices, the community's voices do get heard at those higher strategic levels. And innovation, proactively seeking opportunities to find creative solutions rather than uh, just going with what we know already. Next slide, please. Through, following that, we have developed some commitments. So this all came out of that same work. There are some shared commitments, commitments from the voluntary sector and commitments from uh, the statutory services as well. Um, so those commitments are there. They include holding each other to account, being able to um, talk about uh, what, how we see things maybe going wrong, maybe going right, for, um, for the voluntary sector to be able to voice those um, concerns without that reflecting on 
levels of funding, et cetera, or, or putting anything at risk. Um, ensuring we work in a trusting relationship. Trying to get rid of the jargon, that's both um, from statutory services and from the voluntary sector as well. Trying to break all of that down. Okay, next slide, please. So the voluntary sector commitments. Um, we want to support a strategic vision for Somerset so that we can build our own capacity, knowledge and skills and expertise um, and can add best value to the services that everybody wants to create for communities. Collaborate within our own sector as well as with other sectors, exploring opportunities for joined up working where that's possible and sharing information and resources. Adopting a transparent process that will enable us to appoint representatives who have a mandate to be a voice of the voluntary sector. So this refers to the engagement framework and uh, representatives that we'd like to embed within those more strategic boards and governance. Um, this will um, be explained in more detail as we move on. I'm just going to come back. I've just noticed some of the questions in the um, chat, so I think it's important to just address a couple of those. Um, so the meeting was actually an ICS, uh, an ICB board meeting. Um, it wasn't an assembly meeting, um, and it was very much about the uh, those who sit on the ICB and the ICS looking at how they might develop. Um, this memorandum of understanding, which then all of the sectors buy into. So this is to, to just give a bit of context to that. It's something that NHS England has been driving around embedding the voluntary sectors within ICBs and, and, and integrated care systems. Um, so it was very much around um, how the voluntary sector can uh, can be supported and support that that um, ICS. So I hope that just um, explains why it wasn't an open invite to that meeting. OK, next slide, please. Public sector commi uh, commitments. Um, when that representation is identified where there's a need on a specific board or on a specific strategy group, um, that they will acknowledge the model and uh, and and use that for, for to gain access to the right information and the right people. Uh, value infrastructure for the VCSE uh, and support where we can. So that's around funding. That's around resources. Um, trying to acknowledge that there is a need for our sector to be resourced. Um, committed to ongoing dialogue and respecting as an equal strategic partner. So that's about us really being able to have our voices heard um, and it not just being, a, a, I think a lot of organisations sometimes feel that their presence is just a tick box exercise. And so this is about really um, opening up those conversations on an honest and, and respectful level. OK, and a, and a commitment to the timescales that the voluntary for our input. So that's around ensuring we've got enough time to to read notes and and um, carry out proper engagement before feeding in community based um, information, etc. Cindy, okay. we've, got, we've yeah. got a hand up from Barbara. Sorry, Barbara. Oh yeah, thank you um, so much. I've actually put it in the chat room. In um, reply to your um, saying about this is all to do with faith, um, ICB, ICS, um, voluntary, and only the ICB and the ICS were at the meeting to set out the honest transparency and open. It doesn't seem to me that there were members from the other uh, groups or parties there at the time to say, yeah. hang on a minute, I don't like the sound of this. That doesn't seem okay. transparent to me. Yes, there were. So Spark was there along with um, uh, 
colleagues from the Somerset group of charities. So there were um, there was absolutely um, uh, input from the voluntary sector. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, just picking up. It's okay. And also the 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 assembly meetings are a way of bringing those conversations to the wider sector. Yeah. So the so uh, what it, we're hoping... sorry, Cindy. This is just being fed back to us today from that meeting in March. Yeah, so as I go through, we've been so there's been a lot of work going on in the background to establish this memorandum of understanding. And, and actually, a lot of the work started over a year ago, and there have been some facilitated workshops. The, the previous assembly has fed into that as well. So, so it's a kind of it's a ping pong match, if you like, I guess, you know, so through this assembly, we're hoping through the breakout sessions, we're hoping to have some more feedback from you all that we can then take back again and, and feed into that process. So it becomes a two way conversation as we move forward. And it's it, you know, this is this is just a, a document that sets out aspirations, really. It's actually about the relationship building now and how we how we move that forward and, and, and really start to put that into practice which we'll we'll come to as we move on okay hope that Thank i hope you. that clears some things up we we do get that this is really um uh it's it's a huge um undertaking to change the way in which the voluntary sector has interacted with statutory services so we do get that this is quite overwhelming and and and, and quite big so it's we're trying to break it down into bite-sized chunks that we can then um start that two-way conversation i think that's absolutely amazing one thing that i haven't noticed so far and it probably will and hopefully come up is that because it's um icb ic I, ics heavy i would say um patient participation groups who are extremely important don't seem to be added there uh, and I think they should because they're the you know they're, they're important too as patients and as um yeah everything absolutely. yeah absolutely there's <clears throat> there will be opportunity for everybody to feed in health watch is uh, um, invited to this assembly um as well so that you know um I hope we hope that everybody's voice will get a chance to to contribute okay next slide please Tanya, do you want to ask a question before we move on? No, hand gone down. Nope, okay. Tanya, don't, Tanya's muted, I think, maybe. Oh. Oh, sorry, I don't know how that happened. I thought I'd unmuted. Okay. Apologies. Um, sorry. Yeah, a quick question and also a point. Um, you must forgive me, Cindy, because obviously um, I don't attend every single meeting. Were Health Watch invited to that ICB session? No, it was just the Somerset Group of Charities for that one. Right. OK. Um, yeah, no, no. Um, and also just a point for Barbara that um, I would speak to Sandra Wilson, who is the chair of the PPG chairs. She obviously is involved with Health Watch and also sits on the ICB as the chair. So uh, I would use her as your voice as well. Um, by all means, don't. I'm, I'm really pleased you've brought them up in this session, but but I would use her as an additional voice as well. So uh, ju just just Thank remember you. Sandra's there as yeah. well. And so and just Judith. to clarify, um, Sorry. And, uh, Tanya and Cindy, just to clarify, the ICB um, haven't yet allowed the PPGs to sit in on the ICB. So Judith is there. And the conduit to, so we're not Judith. actually there in person. Sorry, Judith was there as as uh, uh, as a representative. So she was at that meeting. Of yeah. Health Watch. No, she was at the ICB meeting. As a representative of yeah. Health Watch, not yeah. PPGs. No. Thank you. Okay. So, putting this all into practice, what we hope to try and do um, the engagement framework model, which I'll come on to shortly and we'll have a little look through. Um, 
putting that into place. But obviously we need that to be supported by long-term sustainable investment. So putting some resources into that. Um, a commitment to the new way of working. Um, so just as this conversation that we've just had, Barbara, put it, getting those voices really heard. Um, so hopefully this is the start of, of trying to open up those conversations and find a way of doing just that. Um, voluntary sector updates and opportunities to be put towards those relevant uh, strategic meetings. So rather than us uh, being a representative on a meeting um, and being, being there to listen, actually being there to contribute as well and to bring some of the brilliant work that we're all doing out in the community to those um, to those meetings, to those strategic meetings. We're thinking around um, exploring an implementation of buddying systems. So key voluntary sector um, organisations and key statutory sector um, colleagues buddying up so that they becomes that breakdown of what the two different worlds are and how people might support each other and just starting to build those personal relationships and and demystify each other's um, sectors a little bit more. Um, Spark would really love to hold more open events, more voluntary sector events. So part of that is the assembly and, and helping support the assembly to become uh, more um, regular um, and, and having its own voice and, and really steering this work. We want the assembly to be, be shaping how this moves forward. Um, a joint conference in March 2024 so that um, this can be opened up so that we can have everybody in the same room, have these discussions between each other. A commitment to offer places on to the voluntary sector on the, those strategic and partnership boards. So we know that we know that there are um, strategic boards that have voluntary sector representation already, um, but we want to make that more um, more normal, uh, more more key. Um, a review of the commissioning process. So looking at how co commissioning can change, um, and, uh, and we have some examples of this quite recently and how things possibly are changing as we move forward. So um, hopefully we'll be able to talk through that as well later. Um, identifying public sector strategic leaders embedded in the system who can work in partnership with the voluntary sector and champion, champion from within their own sectors. So this is really key, really, because I know a lot of people, and we, we are the same, have the same conversation over and over again with different people within the statutory sectors. And sometimes that can feel but a bit of a struggle. So having those people who are within the um, statutory sector, who are able to champion on our behalf and really understand uh, the issues and what we need to do would be really key to its success. Um, and then exploring system wide mechanisms for gathering data and measuring impact. And we know that that's really important for us always to to find ways of 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 really being able to shout about what we're doing and the, the, the really amazing work that we're all doing. Next slide, please. So before we move on, are there any more questions from all of that? Because that was it's quite a, a whiz through. So I appreciate that it's a it's quite a lot to understand and take in as well. So if there is any questions, please do put your hand up. Nope. Oh, yeah, Angela. Angela. Thanks. Um, morning, everybody. I'm, I'm Angela. I'm Chief Exec at Citizens Advice. Somerset and I'm the chair of Somerset Group of Charities so it's lovely that you've all given the time to come this morning. Thinking about how busy we all are and how complex and fast some of these agendas move and watching the comments in the chat I'm wondering if the buddy system around explaining the background and the updates so 
Catherine um, has led on this work now for several years. And although I've been at lots of meetings, I do have to keep reminding myself what we're doing. So um, it was a statutory change to create the integrated care system um, and to take down the clinical commissioning group. And in Somerset, there's been an awful lot of work to, to establish an effective ICB and a lot of governance, nothing really to do with the voluntary sector that's had to be brought into being. And so where we find ourselves now is a statutory requirement for the ICB to um, work with the voluntary community, faith and social enterprise sector and a very long journey for us to think how best can we facilitate that in a way which is inclusive. Um, but I do lose track and so my suggestion this morning is we just have as a permanent feature a few slides that knit this all together and give us that timeline of who's been who's been where. Um, I know that all of the colleagues at Spark have been been um, totally dedicated to the voices of the small, medium and other larger groups in, in Somerset, but it hasn't been easy. Um, and I'm certainly happy to take any questions, but I'm actually not able to, to be the voice of, of all knowledge on this. So I think as a team around Spark, Somerset Group of Charities, colleagues from um, Somerset Council that are here this morning or the ICB, we can we can carry those FAQs that are coming through and create that induction for everybody. So we, we all stay on the same page. So I thought I'd just come in with that. Sorry to interrupt. Not at all. That's really helpful, actually, Angela. And I think that's a really useful thing for us to clock and, and note as well. Yeah. Um, Caroline has just put something in the chat around Somerset Council being separate from the ICB. Somerset Council is very much a part, uh, part of the ICS. So this is the, the, the this is where the uh, the complicated jargon that we have to deal with comes into play. So. The ICS is the integrated care system. So that's looking at it more holistically. That includes the voluntary sector, et cetera. The ICB is very much the health side of that. So it's the, the integrated care board, which is all about the is health driven. There are um, representatives from council and the voluntary sector on that, but it's that's the, the difference if, if, if that makes that clear. I hope it does, Caroline. Um, and I think we have a question. Paul? Uh, thank you. Uh, Paul von der Heide, Chair of the Integrated Care Board. I thought it might help just to say that I'm here witnessing today as well um, and will happily help. Um, the Integrated Care Board is, is designed to be a collaboration board between the voluntary sector, the social uh, social care and, and kind of council or Somerset Council uh, and the NHS. Um, and certainly Catherine sits on there and Julius sits on, on our board um, and have a have a proper voice on it. So I wouldn't want it just not to think that the Integrated Care Board itself wasn't all about collaboration for everybody. It really is. Um, and my my job is to is to hold it together in that way. So so I, I, I really do hope that we can encourage the, the voluntary sector to really feel part of our decision making and so on in there. So just just to just to try and provide that assurance at this stage. I can I understand the anxiety and it's a huge number of different organizations that we deal with, which is why we have to in the end to have one or two representatives and then work together. But uh, but I mean I'm delighted that we're making the progress we are. Yeah, I think it does need to be said this is a really positive steps forward, isn't it? That that everybody there is there is a real um will to try and make this partnership uh, working work so so I think that you know everybody is really championing for more voluntary sector input into all these strategic decision making um, boards etc so yeah yeah and, and, and very at the neighborhood level it is massively important that we get yeah. as, as you said at the very beginning for me it's critical thank you very much yeah. thank you Paul thank you very much okay so shall we move on Uh, the council is mentioned separately in the MOU. Just to, it's just to outline who the partners are. Um, that's that's all it is. So the the ICB um, 
Somerset Council and the voluntary sector. The, the ICB board still has representation from all of those people, but um, but it's still um, it's still good to to outline who those people actually are, who that means. Okay, so the engagement framework. Can I have the first slide, please? So this is a way of looking at how we might formalise and um, put into place quite a simple procedure for having for ensuring that the voluntary sector voice is heard at those strategic level discussions. Now, there are already organisations we know representing um, on some of those boards and strategic groups. And this is in no way replacing those people and those organisations at all. This is more about ensuring that the wider voluntary sector voice is heard. So where there are um, voluntary groups already represented at certain um, at a certain uh, board or group, this extra representatives wouldn't replace those people. Um, this is about having representatives that can bring a wider voice, so the, the wider voice from the, the voluntary sector. So the engagement framework enables voluntary sector voice to be heard within strategic governance and level discussions. There are three elements. The assembly, us, this. Uh, so this will be where all organisations can find out the information, can feed into current conversations where we can place things on agendas and 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 raise the profile of of things that we might want to to um, ha have our voice heard at the, the assembly is open to all organizations voluntary organizations in Somerset um, so it's really important that please encourage people to come along um, and and have their voices heard at this um, in this forum the strategic Group, which is the steering group for the Somerset Assembly. Um, at the moment, that's the Somerset Group of Charities. And um, I'm sure Angela can fill us in if, if, we, if we ask her nicely. But um, the, the Somerset Group of Charities at the moment is looking at membership and a membership process and, and an application form for that so that organisations can, um, that there's a way into to that, um, that leadership group, uh, that strategic group. And then a leadership group, and this is where we have the elected elected representatives, um, and they will be the ones that attend the strategic and partnership boards. Um, the model is to provide a platform to bring together the voluntary sector across the county through a simple process. So we're hoping that um, we'll be able to demystify this process and, and start thinking about how we might put it into action really really soon um, this is going to be funded so there will be participation funds available for those representatives um, and that will allow them to backfill their time away from their organization so that they can look at reading minutes and notes and agendas of the meetings seeking out others opinions so that we can feed into those agendas and then feeding back from the meetings as well um, and that we hope will come through thematic groups and networks that we already have in existence within the county and perhaps we might identify that there are some gaps and we need to create new forums or new networks but primarily um, at, at the first moment we are looking to identify some key boards and, and strategic groups that we can then make sure that we have that representation on. Okay, next slide, please. So there are several ways in which we think this might work in practice. So for example, um, and somebody's referred to the Somerset Big Tent recommission earlier um, in the chat. Um, so the Children's Young People Mental Health Commissioners wanted to look at um, how they might use learning from the big tent the Somerset big tent to move that commission forward in the coming years so they approached spark somerset to um to help support them in that so what we were able to do was to um help support an event um, with commissioners um and and start that conversation they're now planning some more future events and hopefully that will um 
develop really strongly but it's really good to have that uh, voluntary sector voice at that really early point in conversations around recommissioning. Next slide, please. Alternatively, and this is where we want to just, just highlight that it's not a one size fits, fits all. So there will be different ways in which this engagement model works. Um, local community network support. So um, later on, he uh, Kate Hellard will be talking to us about the local community networks. Um, and here is a is a is a way in which our um, engagement model we hope will help support uh, the voluntary sector voice being really integral to those as well. So it might be that the Child and Black Downs LCN decides that young people's mental health is a real priority for them in their discussions and in their planning. The link worker, the LCN link worker, each LCN will have uh, their own link worker comes to Spark Somerset to ask how they can engage uh, the voluntary sector. And we would put them into touch with the voluntary sector representative who's been elected perhaps by uh, ch children and young people's networks. Um, and they'll make sure that representative will then make sure that the right organizations are being um, consulted and included in that planning and that work with that LCN. Okay, next slide, please. And finally, the more broader way in which we think it will work and uh, is to for us to establish through the groups and networks. So for example, Food Resilience Group, the Somerset Youth Alliance, the Somerset Dementia Partnership, having representatives who then sit on the strategic boards at the, that ICS and ICB level. So for example, on the Mental Health, Autism and Learning Disabilities Board or the Somerset Early Help Board, uh, Early Help Network, sorry. Um, and those representatives, as I said, would, would receive partnership uh, participation funding in order for them to, to, to do that two-way conversation and to be able to feed back to thematic groups and take, take other feedback through back into the strategic boards. Okay. Next slide, please. Well, I think that might be it, actually. Yeah, OK. So before we move on any further, does anyone have any questions about that? Um, it would be really good to hear your feedback on that, um, to, he to hear whether you feel it would be a positive thing, any worries or concerns that you have. We're, re we're really keen to hear all of that. Our email addresses will also be included in the mailing. So if you have questions later on, you can email either of us. Angela? Thanks. This is a, a suggestion that we might like to put forward. One of the difficulties we often have in the voluntary sector is the, the timings of our other partners agendas and um, I'm not sure whether there are sort of high level recommissioning plans or high level consultation plans that could become um, incorporated into an annual document so we have early notice of when we might need to mobilise representation from the voluntary sector. I imagine sometimes that will have to be a fast response to, to something new but I also imagine there will be times when ICB will be reviewing plans or reviewing budgets and ahead of that it, it gives us a longer lead in. I don't know whether anybody thinks that might be helpful um, or whether it's even possible, but it seems to me that that, that would enable us to be, to be more inclusive. Yeah, completely agree. Yeah. It's Jeff White next. Jeff. Jeff's on mute, I think. I think you're muted, Jeff. I think you're still muted. Yeah. Yeah. Right. There you go. Right. Sorry about that. Um, yes, I was listening to Angela and I thought 
to her words were very sincere and absolutely true. And one of the things that's uh, come to me is about the LCMs, that yes, there must be uh, liaison with them, but we must ensure that we have our immediate and early collaboration uh, with them to ensure that they're aware of what our aims and objectives are as an organization, as an assembly. Um, because this is their, their stage, their time, that they are um, developing the way they perform. And uh, so it's important that we get in there early with representation um, to ensure what we want is messaged through. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and, and very much so. And uh, Hannah and I have been doing quite a lot of work with Kate Hellard, who is leading on the LCNs, to make sure that there is a there is a format and a, and a mechanism for us just to do exactly that. Um, so Kate will be here later just to talk through the LCNs um, and, and what's going on with that and where they are. Um, but yes, most definitely. And Kate's just joining the meeting now, actually. So uh, that's very good timing. Um, but yeah, most definitely, it's it's really crucial that we start um, getting our voices heard on those agendas. So it's it's great, really good. Good. Okay. Uh, Nigel. Yes, hello there. Um, I, I just thought I, 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 I'd ask about the role of town and parish, pa, 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 parish ca, 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 councils and all this, because I've been to, 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 to a number of LCNs locally, um, and I'm conscious that they were uh, enabled by uh, consorting with local town and parish councils, but I'm unclear about the role that they, they will play in the future, particularly with the demise of its district councils. They are our principal local albeit not a ter terribly powerful source of local go -go government. Yeah, I think um, town and parish councils are very much engaged with the, the local community networks. And so I would imagine that that's how, how the voluntary sector, that, that will be part of the mechanism for, for, for that interaction and that collaboration with those um, town and parish councils. Um, and I'm sure Kate will talk about that later on. Um, next is Richard. Richard. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to really second um, Angela's uh, voice because, uh, um, because uh, somebody beat me to put my hand down. <laughs> um, because um, we as a parent carer forum, we're not actually so to speak a statutory service however we are written into the children and families act and the um uh, code of practice now for example you've given the example of the recommissioning of the big tent which is obviously designed for children and young peoples we weren't involved in that very first conversation which according to the code of practice for children with special educational needs and disabilities, we should have been. So being on that list w might have helped. Now, you know, obviously the commissioners should have known this in the first place so that we would have been there, but also being on a, some sort of list to say, OK, these are the people that need to be involved right at the very early stages would definitely help to make sure that um, you know, people like yourselves, Spark, would be able to say, right, okay, th these are the people that we need to be yeah. getting into contact to be at that table at those first discussions straight yeah. away. So just to reassure you, the first session that they've had was was. Oh, don't with, worry. Um, I've been in, I've been know. in plenty of meetings with them uh, with Patrick um, no. since, and we're 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 very up on 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 that. He just got a slap on the wrist for not including us in the very first meeting that's all yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was for people who had been uh, somerset big tent providers previously so um yeah absolutely and and they are putting together a, a next event in october so keep buttering yes, on that we, one we've got the invite in that and all right thank you yeah and absolutely it's a really valid point and we we th that's what we're hope hoping to establish via this engagement network is that the right people with the right knowledge are included straight away so that 
so that we don't miss out on the people that should be involved in that conversation. Um, so yeah, that's the theory behind it all anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go into facilitator mode and say that we need to move on now because we're Sorry. 10 minutes behind. <laughs> Sorry, Barbara, we haven't got time Sorry. to come to you. Perhaps if you could put your question into the chat, then um, perhaps I can try I'm help. so sorry. I just had the grandson dropped off on me. Thank you. Sorry, sorry Barbara. About that. Yeah, no. Well, it so, was. Is, sorry, is this... Barbara. Sorry, we, we're going to have to move on. So, could okay. you type it into the chat? I'm really sorry. I will do. I'm yeah, running okay, behind. Thanks. I always run that. behind. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the chat. Um, some of you may have already come across um, the Reflect Recovery New Research. My colleague Penny Schofield has been leading on this. Um, she was unfortunately unable to join us today. Um, so I'm just going to give a brief overview of all the information that she's given me to pass to you. Um, Reflect Recovery New Research was carried out in the wake of COVID. It was to assess the impact of the pandemic on the sector. Um, and consult on the roadmap for the future and a vision of how um, we can all work together to build the sector's resilience going forward. Next slide, please, Bryony. Thank you. Um, it was found that there was a shared vision for the voluntary sector that is collaborative, community-led, coordinated, recognised and appropriately funded. Since the findings were published in March 2022, circumstances have continued to be very challenging for the sector as a whole and for the communities that it serves. Next slide, please. We want to build on the findings of the research and engage groups from across the sector. They might be large, they might be small, CIOs, CICs, to all come together regularly over a period of time to review findings, share experiences and insights and test out some of the ideas and solutions that had arisen, uh, uh, that arose during the feedback, uh, the research. These will be our task and finish groups um, where ideally eight to 10 people will meet monthly. Um, a different VCFSE organisation will lead each group. So far, these lead organisations include CCS, SASP and We Hear You and Spark some uh, supporting and facilitating. We have funding for this work from Somerset Council and that ena enables us to have an inclusion budget to ensure that smaller groups don't face financial barriers to getting involved. And there is a small pocket of money to trial some innovative ideas or perhaps buy in training or facilitation, um, just a, a little bit of money to kind of enact some of the solutions. The initial meetings are starting in July and August. Each task and finish group will focus on one of the priori priorities identified by the research. Next slide, please. Um, so collaborative, um, looking at staff sharing, resources, um, an open door in terms of pathways for those using our services. Next slide. Coordinated. Um, so we want to move from competing for funds to accurate mapping and evaluating service impact and having meaningful professional relationships with others. Um, and pooling needs to keep costs affordable. Next slide, please. Community led. So this is looking at community feedback that support people's access needs, developing a flexible approach to volunteer recruitment to fit the available time and skills of would be volunteers. Recognize, uh, next slide, please. Recognized, um, so raising awareness um, of our high quality provision within communities locally, because that cannot be underestimated. Um, and not having a one size fits all um, approach. Next slide. Appropriately funded. <laughs> um, so making sure that we are um, we have on ongo ongoing flex funder flexibility if project plans must change, um, allowing groups to work together towards common priorities and more importantly, getting that longer term funding. Um, next slide, please. Will they just be talking shops? 
well there there will there will be discussion there will be debate um but if you want to help ensure some good outcomes get involved and help us make the best possible use of this opportunity um we'll be having some facilitated conversations um a bit later in breakout rooms and the key themes from those might um also provide a starting point for these task and finish groups I'm going to pop Penny's details in the chat if you want to get in touch with her. And for those of you watching the recording back, they'll be emailed as well. So I will pop those out for you and get in touch if it's something you're interested in. Oh, thank you, Lindsay. Um, and I will pa pass over to Kate Hellard now, who I believe has the next slide. Hello. Um, so I think I might have come in when you were talking about LCNs, which is interesting. So I missed a bit. Um, it, it came up as part of the conversation about the framework. We haven't gone on without you, Kate. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was hoping you had and I could say wonderful. <laughs> no, and there is a lot of uh, interest in the chat at the moment, actually. So so it's good timing. Right. So what I was looking to do was really a very, very quick whistle stop tour. LCNs, how we anticipate working. Um, largely, but really have an opportunity for you to ask some questions um, and to start that process. So um, next slide, please. There are 18 LCNs across Somerset. Um, they, the drawing up of these boundaries, and I should really reiterate now, these are lines, they aren't walls. Um, so they're, they're boundaries because we needed um, some geographic definition of what L every, each LCN will look like in order um, that we could identify the right partners in the right places and start to pull together some data. So this has been done really carefully, really sensitively through a long period of, of consultation and engagement to really best understand how our communities work across Somerset. I know more about the landscape character in Somerset than I have uh, learned in my lifetime of living in Somerset. So it's been a really interesting process. Um, we have really, we've honoured, so there were some clear lines really around this that you, that to explain. We've honoured parish boundaries um, in their entirety. So we have not cut any parishes at all in this, in this mapping exercise. We've considered how the electoral divisions of Somerset councillors align. Um, but we haven't always honoured them. So some Somerset councillors sit actually across three, maybe four LCNs um, because of the natural flow of residents and the landscape characteristics in any one area. Um, we also considered where the PCN boundaries were, but actually they didn't appear to have such a, a good fit with, with communities. Um, they were historically drawn up in, in a different sort of context. So the 18 LCNs that you see here, um, there are a couple of changes maybe will happen around the edges where some parishes and their residents align better to, to a town in a nearby LCN other than others. All of them, except for number 14, um, which is the Dowsborough LCN, have a significant town within that LCN and we really recognise the flow of residents between town and parishes um, and the way that we use services. We go in and out of towns, we go out to the countryside um, for many of our leisure opportunities, but also to access some services and we flow into towns uh, for commerce, for education, particularly higher education um, for and for, again for other leisure opportunities. So. Um, each of them has has at least one significant town within it. Next slide, please. Um, the purpose of LCNs, and this was has really been defined and agreed through this process. Um, LCNs were proposed in the business case um, for the new unitary authority. In fact, um, what we've done in this process is bring the ambitions of the two business cases together. And we've been able to define the process, the purpose of LCNs through the decision making process of Somerset Council since uh, November last year. 
So they are to be the focus for the new Council for Community Engagement and Development with an ethos of local partnership working, looking to improve outcomes for residents through establishing strong connections between Somerset Council, our communities and our partners. And we absolutely see the VCSFE as a completely critical partner uh, and group of partners within local community networks. You are the link in, in many cases into communities. You are the voice for communities, be they geographic or communities of interest. Um, and you are almost always the people that are doing um, the influential and significant work on the ground in our communities. Um, so we have learned a lot through the three pilots that have been running for the last 18 months. And if we move on to the next slide, can tell you how we've um, built on those pilots to really inform what LCNs will be doing in the coming years. So they will be the forum for community voice and engagement. They will be a means of enhancing partnership in democracy, but also in local decision making. They will enhance collaboration by bringing together um, organisations from all sectors and with residents to really understand what the priorities in any one community are. And we anticipate those priorities being across economic, social and environmental issues. Uh, importantly, they'll be evidence based. And when we talk about evidence, we are talking about um, making sure that we're triangulating the perception of what the issues are in an area with the lived experience of our residents and also the quantitative data that's available. So our data team are working with us to put some data packs together. But the lived experience is really critical and we think that um, you also have a really significant role to play in helping us better understand that. And then they'll create action plans to reflect how those priorities will be addressed. Uh, and if we get it all right, then those action plans, as we've seen in the pilots, the delivery of those action plans will be shared by all of the partners. So there'll be a range of actions. There'll be a range of, of things to be influenced. There'll be a range of innovative solutions to be trialled and piloted. Um, there'll be a range of things to be shared across LCN areas, across Somerset as a whole. Um, there will be work to do with um, the service, Somerset Council services to influence and shape how they're delivered in a place based way in the future. But there'll also be work to do to identify and secure resource opportunities for local projects. Um, and already in the pilots, we've seen them draw down funding from uh, national funding sources to increase service delivery through the voluntary sector in their area. We have seen them draw down Somerset, fund, Somerset Council funding sources, um, leverage on local funding sources and the actions be shared by all of the partners in the room. So if we hop on to the next slide. Um, we have started rolling out the first LCN meetings. They are taking place in local venues um, and they are facilitated by the LCN team. Um, but what I would say is that we have had a real focus on engaging city, towns and parishes in the first instance alongside our Somerset Council members, because actually um, for them, and in many cases, this is the biggest step change and a new way of working. We learned very quickly in the pilots that the voluntary uh, community, faith sector, social enterprises are really adept at working in this way, working collaboratively to identify priorities, um, considering what the action plans are and to think about how they actions, the shared delivery of those actions is, is divvied up in quite a strategic way. Um, but it's quite a new way for working for many councillors who are on in the main, they're volunteers and they have quite limited capacity and have had particular focuses, um, particularly in smaller parishes, on quite a um, a small sort of brief, if you like, uh, in the past, because of course we have to remember that the remit of a parish council is to meet at least one time once a year and to make some allotments available 
to the residents in their parishes. So that is their statutory responsibility. Everything else they do is on top of that. Um, so we've had a standard agenda that has focused on building relationships, identifying a chair and also starting. And it's really important to reiterate the starting to discuss what's important to residents in our areas. Again, that's walking through a series of questions um, that, that leads us to thinking about what, who else do we need in the room? So lots of your organisations are, are being identified at a rate of knots <laughs> because we recognise that we really need you in the room to inform the conversations around one topic or another um, or that you have a particular geographical um, presence in an area and therefore a, a good wider understanding of, of the needs of residents. Um, the next slide, please. So um, we are in the early days of really identifying and pulling together an LCN team. Um, we're hoping that we will have uh, LCN link offices in place uh, in the autumn. They will have responsibility for one LCN or two maybe LCNs each, um, but they will be they're very much about it's about having a team of link officers with uh, a myriad of expertise within that team. There is a web presence for LCNs and you can have a look at our website. If you pop LCNs into the somerset.gov website, you will it takes you to a landing page. Um, you, you see the map that I shared at the beginning, but you can also look at each of the 18 individual LCNs uh, and better understand which parishes are within that LCN and what area they cover. We are, as I said, we're creating those bespoke data and information packs. So we're working really closely with the Somerset Intelligence team to pull those together. But we've also been working with other partners to better understand what data they have and, and citizens advice in particular, so that we can make sure that we are taking every opportunity to uh, align our data, to, to have a broad overview of, of what's going on in areas. We want to identify where some of the issues are in areas um, and, and make sure that parishes know about some of the things that they might not have already been familiar with or know about. But we also want to know about the opportunities. So we would love to hear from you if you can see opportunities over the horizon, whether they be vocational training opportunities or community transport opportunities, um, local walking and cycling infrastructure opportunities. There are many. And so we don't want this just to be deficit based. We want this to, to be really able to tell a story of an area um, and uh, and support LCNs to, to really sort of do that deep dive into some of those areas. Uh, we are scheduling meetings for the coming year that will take us up to the AGMs, which will be around about this time next year. And um, we're working with ICT and Democratic Services to ensure that we have that meeting support. They are operating as hybrid meetings. Um, which makes them more accessible than if they were just in the room. Even though there are 18, they're still quite big geographic areas. So the, the travel um, and making sure we mitigate that with an understanding of uh, what our transport options are in Somerset. Um, it's really important that we have that hybrid setup. We will be supporting chairs with some training and particularly looking at that facilitation training. Again, this is quite a new way of working. It doesn't have a top table. The way that the meetings work is very discursive. Um, there's a lot of round table discussions, um, not quite World Cafe style, but heading in that direction. And uh, and that's quite unfamiliar for a lot of our um, councillor colleagues. So how they're facilitated is going to be really important going forwards. And we're building on those initial discussions that the perception, the thoughts that have been raised in those first meetings to identify who the other stakeholders uh, who could support those conversations going forwards will be. We will be in touch with almost all of you and we would love to hear from you if you have a particular desire to work in a geographic area um, or an issue that you're looking at across Somerset. And then we're agreeing with key partners how they'll engage and uh, Spark in particular are the conduit for that 
discussion really for how we engage with the VCSFE sector and I always say those letters the wrong way around I've done it three times today I've put the F in the wrong place somebody said it to me this morning she said I think the F is always there I was like no it's not it's there and now I've picked up um so that's a real whistle stop tour I think the next slide just gives you some links um it does. Yes, there you go. So there's some um, links and you can see how we've been working in some of the pilot areas, the FAQs and importantly, our email address. So do you all gone into the chat? Brilliant. Thank you very much. I can see there's some hands up. Shall I let what's the best way of doing that? Let me have a look. I'm just going to just quickly say that we can only sort of do five minutes because we're already I've I've made us all late anyway, so <laughs> sorry. <laughs> No worries. I'll be quick in my answers. We've got Charlie first. Yeah, hi. Quick question. Thank you for all that information. I'm just a bit concerned about the age profile of LCNs. My experience of these sorts of things here in Somerset is they're dominated by the retired or the semi-retired, or if they're young people, they're like professional politicians that are doing it for their CV. Um, how are we going to ensure that we get people of prime working age, aka between the ages of 18 and 45, equally represented on these LCNs. Thank you. Yeah, so um, that's the, the next step. You know, they are underpinned. That's why they're underpinned by that ethos of community participation and engagement. We know that the majority of people don't come to meetings. And in fact, when you close your eyes, you can see the same 200 people in any one area in any one meeting. So it's really important that um, that there is an a degree of work that happens in between the main meetings and we've seen that really successfully happen in the pilots um, they have gone out to to youth conferences where they've spoken to 300 gathered the views and input of 350 young people they have been on the street talking to residents um, and understanding where the pinch points and services for them are that's the lived experience it's really critical that LCNs work with all of the partners to better understand the lived experience of residents and it won't be in the main meetings. So we're really alive to that. We would welcome any more thoughts and insight to help us inform that as we go forward. Thanks, Kate. And we've got Angela next. Thanks, Kate. Really helpful. Um, I'm being a geek, I'm on the website having a look at the LCN handbook, which I highly recommend. It sums everything up. <laughs> um, and so what I was wondering is, what are the outputs from this effort and the LCNs? And um, I can see the role will. So there's a, a number of bullet points. Identify evidence based community priorities and create plans for how those priorities will be addressed. Are the LCN implementing those plans? Yes, as a collective of partners. So if we get LCNs wrong, Somerset Council will have an enormous to-do list that it will never be able to achieve. If we get LCNs right, all of the partners within the LCN will have a to-do list that aligns with their existing priorities their ways of working, but they will be greater than the sum of their parts. So working together, they will be able to access the resources, the support, they will be able to influence policy and shape the delivery of place based services. Does that answer your question, Angela? Thank you very much, Kate, it does. Great, thanks so much, Kate. Um, feel free to stick around, uh, but if you have other things to do, then obviously you don't need to, but feel free. I'd to love around. to, and I will definitely come to the next one properly, but I am completely up to yes. my ears this morning, sorry. <laughs> Great. No, fine. Thanks, um, Kate. And, uh, yeah, thanks so much. And again, it, it's every everything is um we've got this really amazing opportunity for the voluntary sector to shape an awful lot of things and an awful lot of services so it's this is a really great springboard moment i think and um yeah just keep keep keeping people involved and connected and and hopefully we'll be able to to really shape community services much much more important uh, fundamentally 
Okay, thank you so much. Um, so we are now going to move on to breakout groups. Um, I think all of a sudden you'll suddenly find yourself uh, leaving me to we... place in another one. <laughs> Hold on one sec. I'm just going to share the questions quickly. Everything is in the... Um, it, you, so there will be facilitators in the room, um, but these are the questions that we are going to be looking at and I will let did you want to say anything else Cindy? Yeah so it would be really great just to um, in the spirit of everything we've talked about this morning we want to feed back to all the conversations that Spark are involved in about what the challenges are for the sector at the moment and what we need as a sector to start even thinking about overcoming some of those challenges so we can't do that without your input into that you know we, we can't speak on your behalf without hearing what you want us to say so this is that opportunity now to really just put across what what are those challenges for your sustainability and funding right now and how what you need to start thinking about overcoming them we know there aren't any magic ones we know that we can't just make everything brilliant and perfect but but we can start advocating for change and support and um, and and help to to start thinking about how we overcome those challenges. OK, so I don't I think we will be. I will open them now and it will happen. <laughs> if there are any issues, stay in the main room and I will come and sort you out. It was discussed in one of the breakout rooms. I think it's really important to flag um, is that um, there is a diversifying and developing your fundraising um, training session being run by Spark. And I'm going to put the Eventbrite link in the chat because it's the last chance to book today. Um, so if that is something that you would be interested in, um, the information is in the chat for you. Um, and Cindy, I think it's being passed over to you to go through a couple of the um breakout rooms i'm gonna pop menti back up for some last feedback while you're doing that okay i don't have a list of the um who was so i would go with ruth and jeff and Lindsay. i would say looking at who was interactive in the chat brilliant thank you so we're just going to hear back from a few of those groups. Um, if you could just try and give us the top three headlines, um, just so that we can we can hear some some examples of what was being said. Really, um, it's nice to hear that and have a, have a little bit of feedback. But we're quite conscious that we've we have only got ten minutes left, so we can't go around every group, unfortunately. Um, so, Lindsay, would you mind doing the honours and starting and just giving us a little brief overview of the chat, maybe three main headlines of, of what you were talking about, please? Absolutely, sure. Thank you very much. Um, I am um, Lindsay Brown. I work for Spark Somerset and I work in the communications team. So this has been a great session for me hearing and reading everybody's comments. Um, thank you very much. So the main the main bits of feedback we had really were I mean, the key one is is you know for sustainability is is funding for core funds um, being the holy grail. Um, you know, uh, other smaller or project funding is all very well, but we need the core funding um, in order to um, exist um, <clears throat> and do everything that we do. Um, the other comments really were about a sort of um, deadlines for funding. Some of the funding deadlines are very short; don't allow time really to uh sort of do the do the sort of consultation that is needed to answer the funding questions effectively um and then also um sometimes you're expected to report back on the success of the funding within a very short time period when you know perhaps the funding was only really you know, kind of kind of kick starting the project so it's quite hard to then report back on that and then i suppose one other was just around um yeah, also that some of the funding, um, it, you know, the the, the time scales, um, it's a sort of veil of mystery, um, as somebody put it, around um, the, the sort of time scales um, entrenched in financial years, 
um, and you know events it doesn't always work um, the, the time scales don't always work with the sort of projects that you're wanting to um, to put on or um, to run events wise so uh, yeah that was another bit of feedback thank you brilliant thanks so much Lindsay um, I can see some people are just popping some my thoughts and feedback into the chat as well please feel free to and any, any of the um, uh, facilitators if you or anybody really if you want to just pop some challenges or even successes or things that we can do to to start thinking about some of these challenges then please do pop it all in there um, it's really helpful for us um, so Jeff would you mind feeding back please from your group? Hap happily um, we talked about the the apparent step change required between piloting an air piloting a small project in a relatively small geographic area and scaling that up to a consistent countywide services and there's a suggestion that some possibly of our public sector commissioning colleagues need to identify what how that step is is best dealt with rather than saying oh, that looks great can you do it across the county because if you've piloted it in one area probably the initial starting point is no so that's that's a conversation about how we commission things and procure um the underlined the value in the infrastructure offer of the support that spark provide in ensuring groups can have those basic governance and safeguarding principles in place to enable them to take referrals and support vulnerable service users and clients and, and recognizing the value of that and always recognizing a need for more um, and also the other one was uh, and this picks up on some of the mentee stuff that's on the screen now around recruiting volunteers with skills like financing uh, like finance so that finding a new treasurer and things like that um, yeah Lot, lots more but I'm aware of time. Brilliant thank you so much Jeff and finally Ruth. Um, yeah the two things that I've put down um, there was a suggestion about mapping so a big piece of work as it was admitted but mapping what everybody provides so that and where they get their funding from because I think what there was a feeling was that there's lots of groups providing some amazing things but if we mapped it out we could probably see where money could be put towards preventative measures which would effectively um, be cost effective in the long term so that was one of the things and then about having sort of baseline training available to all, all organizations because we were talking about how, you know, how time consuming it is and how and having to pay for training and things like that. So if there was some if there was a, a baseline of training, safeguarding, safer recruitment, all that sort of thing that was in a package that was just available to small organisations. So we knew that everybody had the same training. So those were two of the things that that came out of our group. Brilliant. Thank you so much. It's really interesting. Quite a lot. Have, uh, Many of those were brought up in, in our group as well. So I'm sure that there, there were quite some common themes across it all. Um, so Hannah, do you need to talk us through the, the Menti moment? Do we need to all? Yeah, well, I think it's just quite That's nice quite to funny. look at some of the reflections. A lot of the key barriers to successful collaboration is, I can see time, cost, um, Really honest feedback there. As a large organisation, smaller charities feel we're unapproachable, um, which I think is is lovely. Communication, competition, and trust. Um, generic unpooled volunteering training would be useful to a good handful of respondees. Um, Eleven have effective working systems for evaluating the impact of your work, which is brilliant. Um, Think about financial viability again longer term funding and contracts um is top of the list which is no surprise um 
and it looks like a central platform to share ideas and resources with groups across the county is the most help in the near future. Um, and yeah, there's loads of feedback coming in in the chat, which is really useful. Um, so thank you to everyone. And like I said, the, the link for Menti is in the chat if you want to um, kind of go away and have a think about it. And I'll keep that open for a, for a little bit and send out information with the post of invite because you might well think of things and you think, oh, I should have said that. Doesn't matter. Tell us anyway. Um, we want to hear. Thanks, Hannah. Thank you. Um, please do, as Hannah's just said, please do send us feedback. We really want these assembly meetings to work for you and to be um, to be useful for you. We're really, really keenly aware that we all have a lot of meetings to go to, so we don't want to be taking up time and it not be helpful for you. So please do um, feedback to us what you what you would like from these assembly meetings and, and how we can make them better, uh, more, more uh, positive, more helpful, anything, just feedback to us. We're, we're quite thick skinned, so we're quite helpful. We're, we're happy to have the, the negative as well as the positive. I've noted that we need a, 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 a comfort break in the middle, so we shall, we shall do that next time as well. Apologies. Um, so we'll be sending out all the slides. Um, we'll be keeping everybody up to date with everything. Um, as Hannah said, please do feel free to contact either of us to talk through any of the uh, any of today, but any of the issues that you that are important to you. We're really really keen to to hear everything that you need us to hear. So we're very approachable. Please do um, contact us. Um, and I think. That's the only thing I would like to say is a big thank you to all our facilitators and yes. in the rooms. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very and much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Welcome. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.